Good morning, everyone. Hello. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Tuesday's Treasure. I am so excited to be here with all of you this morning. I hope everyone's having a really great morning that you've been able to have your tea. I'm just going to put my Bible up here or your coffee or whatever you like to drink in the morning. I, I think some of you already know that I love to drink orange juice, but this morning I just you know, I'm enjoying my water. I also love water. Um, but I, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. I'm going to wait just a little bit more before we get started. But whether you're watching this with me right now or later, I just hope that, um, yeah, you are able to just see what God's been teaching me and, um, I just hope that, um, yeah, this is a really great time for me to be able to just share what God has been um, trying to teach me in this time. And I just want to welcome you. Um, but I'm going to read this morning in Exodus. I'm going to be reading actually one of my favorite um, miracle stories. I was actually spending time with my Sharon sisters last night and we were talking about miracles and miracles in the Bible. And we were talking about um, um, how God used Moses to um, part the Red Sea. And that's just such an incredible, incredible miracle um, in the Bible and we see miracles all over the scriptures like God has done so much um, Jesus performed so many miracles um, so this is not just the one but I really want to look at this story this morning because even just thinking last night and um, even praying this morning it's just been really helpful for my heart and this is exactly what I need to hear sorry if that's super loud Um. But I want to pick it up and um, verses 21 and 29. Now, because it's such a long chapter, I won't be able to read the whole, um, the whole chapter for you guys. But I do just want to give some context of we're picking it up a little bit later in um, Exodus 14. So we see um, in Exodus that um, the Egyptians are, the Israelites are, are in Egypt um, because of Joseph uh, leading them there and bringing them. And that's an incredible story in itself. But then we see that the Egyptians are um, like not treating the Israelites well. They're treating them as slaves and um, they cry out to God, and so God uses Moses, and um, they perform the miracles. And then right now we see that um, that Moses, like God is calling Moses to lead the people out of Egypt. Um, and finally, like Pharaoh gave the, okay, yes, like God softened his heart. and But then right after, he hardened his heart again. So now... The, even though the Israelites are on their way out, um, they're being pursued by the enemy, which is the Egyptians. So I'm going to pick it up in verse 21, and it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground. And a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots of horsemen followed them into the sea during the last watch of the night. The Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud the Egyptians army and threw them into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficult driving and the Egyptians let said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and the chariots and horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea at daybreak, and the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing towards it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea. None of them had survived. So I just read a good chunk, um, but I want to keep reading just a little bit more in verse 29. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. That day, the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and the Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. When the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and Moses, his servant. So I love... Um, this story we see a miracle here the we see that god parted the red sea for his people to get by he threw these people into confusion like the egyptians and he you know um was with the wheels he like made them not work because he was trying to continue to provide a barrier between um to protect the Israelites, like using an angel and um, using, you know, the cloud of um, pillar. And, and so we see how God is really moving here. And um, it's just such a miracle. Like, and I think for us, I know that there's so much going on in the world with Corona so happening, like the pandemic and how it's changing so much and it has changed so much already and we still don't really have lots of clarity of how the future is going to look like i was just even listening to um some of the college campuses plans for the fall and it's just not not the same a lot of these freshmen or or even the upperclassmen are not going to have the same experience there's so much uncertainty and Um, even with the social justice going on in the world and everything that comes with that. And, and then we also even just personal things of, you know, maybe there is a, a job loss or, um, just a loss in general of a friend or, um, a spouse or, you know, family member, um, or it could, it could be anything in our lives you know, finances and the worries of that. And I can just, like, I can relate. I just remember, I have a quick short story. I remember in college, actually was graduating. I had um, some events. And then after, like, in a week, I was, you know, going to graduate. And my friend and I decided that we were going to go and celebrate our graduation. Um, and we were going to go on a, on a road trip. We were going to go down to North Carolina and visit a friend and we would stop at different places. But in order to do a road trip, you know, you need gas money, you need just money in general for food and for staying at places. And I just had stopped working early because of all my graduation events and all of that. So I, you know, was looking at my bank account and it wasn't really matching up with what I wanted to do. And I really, really wanted to go on this road trip with my um, friend and we wanted to go visit different like churches and meet different people and be able to just, um, just connect and have this great experience. Um, And I just remember praying so much about it because I didn't have any other way to be able to afford it. It was a week out and I still didn't, didn't have much money. And so um, I remember one day at this event, a family friend came and she handed me an envelope and not, you know, she didn't stay that long. She left. Good morning, Michelle. And um, I just didn't pay too much mind to it because I was busy, but then um, realized that after there was an envelope and it was full of money, just in a little bit more than I expected to be able to go on this trip, which was so amazing. And usually... Um, 
usually she always gives me like expensive gifts, which is she's so generous and so kind, but she never really ever gave me money like cash. Um, hello, Sydney. Good morning. And so that was just such a miracle because I had been praying so much. I didn't have a way. It felt like a dead end. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And I don't know if you've ever, you know, had a I have felt like there is like a dead end, whether it's in a relationship or a dream job, like I was sharing or, you know, finances or your faith or, you know, a simple habit, whatever that is for you. Um, we can find ourselves in, in these dead ends, but God just made and did a great miracle in my life, which is because I really wanted this. And that was such an incredible trip. I'm so grateful to this day. I was able to meet so many people and, Um, I made a really great friend out of this trip. We were able to go to different churches and um, just even connect my friend and I, go to nature, see beautiful waterfalls. It was just amazing. And it was all God performing this great miracle in my life because I did not know how I was going to get that money, but God God provided for me. And so I just love this scripture because I can feel even in this time, of the world that we're in right now, it can feel like a dead end. It can feel like there's a lot going on, but I just want to encourage us um, just because I felt so encouraged that God is doing something great here. You know, it's not a dead end. It's a time where he can really inspire us, help us grow in our faith that we have to put our trust in him. He moved powerfully And really provided for his people, for the Israelites. He parted the Red Sea. And that is just so helpful for my faith. Like these people didn't see a way. Earlier they were crying out to God. And, you know, in verse 13, Moses saying, do not be afraid. And yes, it's normal to be afraid in that situation or even in these situations. But at the end of the day, it's so helpful for me to remember, like to trust God even when there, it seems like there isn't a way there, like God can do something so amazing, turn your situation around, um, provide financially, provide for you spiritually, help you, um, and guide you in these situations. So even for me right now, I just feel like I can feel like there are dead ends in my life. And I just have to remember, this is a time for me to choose faith over fear, um, and peace over panic. Um, And I just love that in verse 14, even though I didn't read this, says the Lord will fight for you. Um, You need only to be still, which, you know, in times of hardships, like we can, you know, fear will tell us to retreat and and impatience will tell us to um, have to do something now. And presumption is like, okay, let me jump into the water before it's even parted. But um, to be still is to really trust God. And um, even later on, like the Lord called Moses to stretch his hand. So there's a time of to be still and then a time to um, do something and be a part of it. So even in these times that we feel like we're in dead ends um, and we don't have enough money, it's still a time to give and to provide, to give back to God, to have faith that he will take care of you or um whether you know relationships like being able to be intentional and and um just build friendships and and to be intentional and to encourage other people or whether it's even a time of um just the pandemic to be able to um use the time that we have now to really grow deeper in our walk with God um like deeper study or meditation and and prayer so there are things that we can do Um, even in the waiting um, that can be glorifying to God and are faithful and trusting. But this has been something that has been helpful for me um, and really helpful for my heart. And I love that it says, you know, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and the and in Moses' servant, but even just this idea of trust, of really trusting in God, um, even when it can feel like a dead end. But God... um, God can do anything. He can make anything happen just as we see in the scriptures. But I hope that this was helpful for all of you. And I hope that you all have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me. And I can't wait 
to see you back next Tuesday. Thank you. Bye.